Michael, I first saw this machine at Emo last year. Uh, can you tell us about these models, this new Swiss Deco, uh, and the machines in the range, and why you introduced them? So it was uh, a lot of customers are coming with parts that we cannot machine today on our Evo Deco line. So they asked us to develop something new, and we heard this, and we make this machine for the more complex part, especially also on the counter operation. We have a lot more tools and also the long part. And we come on the market with, uh, the first, for the first time with the turret. OK, now there's two machines looking at the notes here. You've got the Swiss Deco 26 and the Swiss Deco 36. They're, they're the two models in, in the range, correct? This is uh, two models with the bar capacity for sure. After we have the difference with the, the two gang or the turret version. So why have you introduced the option of having the turret? Because, uh, yeah, so the Swiss Deco T is the turret version. Why, why have you gone down that road? We've gone that road to make a more complex part and have a more powerful tools on the main operation. So, so the turret services the main, just the front spindle or can it service the sub-spindle as well, the second spindle? They, we can work on the bore spindle with the turret, yes. So with the turret, you've got 12 stations, but I'm assuming you can probably get three tools per station. So you've got the opportunity to have 36 tools on the turret, which is where you get the, uh, the opportunity to have more tools. Is that right? It is right. We have a lot of tools existing on the market, but we will have some specific tool. And after on demand with three tools on one position and something like this, depend on the, what the customer needs to produce the part. Now, on, also on the turret version, there is the option to have a, a, a B-axis on that turret, so you can um, do ang angled features. Right, it will come for the beginning of next week, uh, next year. This year, we are starting with the standard turret, and after with this B-axis, we have the opportunity to, to make the increase in, by 90 degrees, so the turret comes just in front of you, and you can work on the both spindle together, or only on the counter, or main spindle. And, and if you went for the TB uh, version, you say that's going to be available possibly next year, is that correct? Yes, we are starting now to mount the first prototype and make some tests and so on, and for the next year we will be able to sell it. I've got to say, I've been watching this machine move today and it glides. I mean, it, you know, a lot of machine tools, they're, they're moving about and they're kind of jumping around, but this it's just it's so smooth the way it moves. I mean, it just sort of oozes quality, doesn't it? This is the optimization of the, the moving. So we have the, our program who will take the time to check and don't go fast in one position and wait after two or three seconds. So it can pro make some vibration on the part and use a lot of energy. And we have in this new trend to use the, take the time and don't spend energy for nothing. But you, it doesn't affect the cycle times either, though, which is the incredible thing, because you're optimising it to the perfect point. But it's also very quiet. I mean, this machine was operating today, and you could barely hear it, barely hear it running. Yeah, it's quiet, but after you can put steel inside and make machining, and we'll make noise, I feature <laughs> for sure. <laughs> now, let's, let's talk about the, the, um, the uh, gang tools on this, because on the back working spindle as well, you've got a lot more tools on there, haven't you? Yes, you have the possibility to put four fixed tool to make turning and after you have four fixed tool to make drilling operation and up to eight tools to make uh, milling or some taping or something like this and after you can put also cross tool up to four cross tool also on this back operation. And I was also made aware that when you were developing that back working operation um, you actually have used uh, one of your spindle motors out of your main spindle for the driven tools on the back working, so you've got a lot of power. Yes, this is the same spindle for the counter and the main operation, so we have the same power. Would I be right in saying it's about 8 kilowatts, or is it more than that on, on the back working tools? On the 36, yes, it's up to 8 kilowatts. And, and then also on the main spindle, I was also made aware that you've got 56 newton meters of torque, so that's a monster of a spindle uh, on, on the main, isn't it? Right, this is our wish to have something very powerful. In the same ID, we start with the line we have before with the Sigma machine. So the customer will know the Sigma, they will find the, the same basis of performance, but better of the level of today.
And, and does that apply to the back spindle as well, the subspindle? Yes, this is our trend to have always the same spindle in operation and counter-operation. All our machines are like this by Tornos. Tell me about the hydraulic brake as well in the spindle. Yes, this is an option we will have to fix the spindle to make a lot of power on machining, especially for the milling operation. So you will have uh, the, the spindle will not more move and you can work uh, with a lot of power on the, the spindle. Okay, so we're really going towards making, uh, you know, removing a lot of material here, aren't we? This is what this machine is about, is about power and productivity. Uh, guide bush and non-guide bush, how does, it, how does that work on this machine? So in less than 15 minutes, you can take out the guide bush and just come with the spindle, the main spindle, trowel and work direct on the spindle, so part up to 100 millimeter. So this machine is 32 millimeter with guide bush and up to 36 millimeter diameter without guide bush. So you have the complete powerful also with the, the collet. Um, and what would the machine come with? I mean, I notice here that the, the two machines we have have uh, swarf uh, extraction, they have filtration, uh, they also have um, liquid cooled spindles. Is all that standard? This is standard, this is a need of the machine. This is what we think from the beginning, to have a machine who can work alone the most, the most of the time. This is the target because what is the cost now in Europe and uh, the trend is that the machine can work alone at night, so you will learn a lot of money. And, and what about high pressure, uh, high pressure oils and stuff like that? So you have in standard the 10 bar pump in the machine to make the oil everywhere in the machine and after you have the option to add up to two pumps, 60 bar or 120 or the last one, the 360 bar. And I want to go back to the tools again before we uh, conclude this interview because I'm intrigued here. How many tools in total can this machine have if you've got the turret? With the turret is up to 49 tools and 28 of them can be rotative. And then of course there's the control. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. This is an ISO machine. We can control with the TZIS and we have our brand new control panel with touch screen and big screen and the machine can will be able to work with all uh, modern industry 4.0 system. It looks like quite a trendy control, doesn't it? Like the whole machine does really, it looks very, very, very modern. Yeah, it was inspired by the s s mobile phone and what you have today uh, to, to work with the machine. So you will, it will be up and you can configure like you want. And uh, looking good is one thing, but um, is it going to be easy for me to pick up and program at the control? I mean, you've got f you're talking about having 49 tools in a machine, two spindles. How am I going to get my head around uh, programming my part? For sure, you have the thesis who will help you all along to make the program correctly. And uh, when you put the program in the machine, it will work. All the error and so will say you, thesis will say you before that you have incompatibility on something like this. Um, um, do you think this machine is the future then for Tornos? I know it's just literally launched and you're just you know, now selling these machines. Has this got a good future? Yes, this is the right uh, future in the good trend and this is what the customer need and we'll see in the next year. But um, And where do you see the market? Who's going to be buying these machines? Is there a particular industry? I think so in the medical industry and a lot normally in the car automotive industry. Tornos is all about precision as well, isn't it? Precision and productivity. Uh, how accurate are these machines, uh, finally, Michael? We are today in test, so it's difficult to give you an answer perfectly on this, but uh, we should make a machine like we have on the other line of machines. So, so within, within uh, microns, absolutely microns. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you.